working with Donna Summer was beyond words because she was not only one of my favorite artists, but her producers were my favorite producers. Her early ones, like Giorgio Moroder, he was like one of my top five heroes. I did this, I, I worked with her, you know, years after doing the, the Rick James thing. And uh, I kind of got my feet wet on the disco and funk era doing that project and several others. But it was actually my work with Samantha James, an artist that I produced and got her first record deal um, that caught Donna's ear because it was kind of um, a soulful electronic sound. And that's what she was really into. I, I would have never known, but um, the stuff on her iPod and the things that she liked to hear were the type of things that I was producing. In fact, she had a couple of things on her, a couple of her songs on her favorite list on iTunes. So that was, you know, quite, quite an honor. So when we met up as a possibility, you know, um, I immediately was thinking, yes, you know, we can finally do the, you know, the, the 2000s version of I Feel Love. You know, I was ready to just patch in some modular synths and go at it, you know. And she surprised me by saying, yeah, actually the sound that I like is more like the Sade soulful side that you did. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, that's interesting. I'd peg you much more pop and, you know, even electro. And she's like, yeah, well, how about we bridge the sensibility? So when we did I'm a Fire, it was done at The Village and we tried so many different approaches. I mean, it was, you know, I was, once I got the call that, you know, I was going to be working with Donna, it was like, I was just 24 hours a day dedicated to that. I dropped everything. I was like, I need to make the cut on this record. So we ended up setting up, you know, doing some band stuff um, where I brought in some players and we played some cool kind of disco-ish stuff. That didn't work. And then we ended up doing some kind of housey, you know, some of the things I was, I actually did a remix of a track that she had already written. That didn't really fly either. So funny enough, we broke it down to just, I said, okay, let's go back to writing the old Sammy Khan style of like me on a Rhodes and you start singing and let's just see what happens. So we ended up doing a 25 minute jam and she was like an actress, like where every idea, whenever I changed chords, she would change voices or she would become this whole other person. So somewhere between minute seven and minute 12, we got into this groove where it kind of was this laid back, funky, Thing, but it also had a Latin side to it, almost like a little bit Brazilian. And she started coming up with the I'm a Fire melodies. And then I kind of started making sections out of it. And when I went home that day, you know, and came back the next day and we listened back, I was like, listen from this point to this point. You know, they, they, we didn't have any lyrics or like any hooks necessarily, but we had the beginnings of what it would be. So I and so we all agreed that there was something there, but it was hard to pinpoint what direction to take that in. So what I ended up doing was remixing our initial jam. So I took what we did and her scat vocals, and I put the whole track underneath it, and then I brought it back a couple of days later, and she loved it. And then we started structuring the song. And then for the Spanish breakdown, she wanted Cuban percussionists and just like full on, you know, jam session. So we brought in this incredible Cuban section there and just went for it. And then it just became that track. It's kind of a hybrid of Latin, Brazilian, down tempo, chill out, soul, pop, all kinds of things, you know, and uh, it became a single. And, you know, it's seven minutes long, so it was interesting. It was kind of interesting that they would choose that as a single, but it worked. Let's go. Cool.